afternoon, everyone. Uh, you all okay? Good. Uh, so I work for Information Management, part of Transport for London. Um, as some of my talk will uh, mention, that we're looking at new ways of thinking about how to deliver transport services. So one of, one of the biggest moves that's been made recently is information management now works for marketing uh, and not finance. Uh, so we're now part of customer communication and technology uh, and no longer part of central services for finance. So some of the slides are quite nice because I get access to marketing colleagues. Um, I've actually been working with and for road space management for about two and a half years now uh, on something that has become known as SITS, which is the Surface Intelligent Transport System. So we're looking to implement uh, better management of road space. Um, so what does road space mean? Road space means pavements, cycle places, and then the carriageways that traffic, buses, HGVs and everything else runs on. Um, so it's quite uh, an ambitious program. Uh, under the last mayor, we've spent uh, approximately four billion on starting schemes that reduced road space. Um, and so our challenge is getting ever more difficult because we have fewer and fewer resources with which to manage um, the space on the road. And people's uh, perception of what's good has changed. So people like a nice environment to walk in. So we, we want wider pavements. How do you create space for wider pavements? You make carriageways smaller. How do you make space for cycles to move around London more safely? You make the carriageway smaller. And so everything we're doing is about pedestrianisation and slowing traffic down. Um, but we kind of have this belief that we need to keep traffic moving. It does support London's economy significantly, uh, particularly delivery of goods. And, and therefore, um, we need to start using technology more effectively to, um, as the strap line says, keep London moving. Uh, so um, what's this all about? Th this is our business challenge. Okay, the, these are relatively old numbers um, from about 2013. We're, we're probably approaching some of these limits uh, already that, that are uh, being talked about. So the prediction is by 2013, London will be 10 million people up from the current numbers. Uh, the tube can't keep pace. Uh, we can't put more buses on the roads. We're up to about 9,000 at peak now. Um, and journey time for cars is uh, dropping off a cliff, basically. Uh, that's reality today. Um, again, just to give some numbers, if you take traffic, uh, last year we had tube strikes. And on the day of a tube strike, there was a 3% increase in traffic. Uh, that was resulting in a 90-minute increase in journey time across London. Um, so that's kind of the threshold we're at at the moment in terms of sensitivity. Small changes mean big increases in journey time. Um, so if you ever wonder why it takes a long time to get somewhere, that, that is part of the reality. Uh, specifically from roads, um, using kind of the same numbers as the last slide, this is what it's looking like for us in London. So a 60% increase in congestion uh, by 2030. Um, these numbers we're much more certain about. We are measuring this kind of level of congestion increase over our baselines, uh, getting close to this year, probably exceeding by 2018. Uh, and so we have a, a real challenge. And so the, the business response to that, because recognising we are a transport company, is that we need to do something a bit smarter with technology. Uh, so th this is what we're looking to do. Better understand real-time demand, how many cars are trying to come into London. Uh, in better intelligence, so what insight can we gain from our data, both post-event analytics type things and real-time. And then how do we create new thinking and use this information in, in better ways, using technology potentially, but how do we get innovation from the market in order to support us in making traffic flow um, better than London? Another interesting, well it's interesting to me, another interesting fact is that we don't like fast moving traffic. 
because we get measured by killed and seriously injured, so accidents. And the slower the traffic moves, the fewer accidents you happen. And so there is a policy uh, that you all uh, suffer from, um, if you're a driver, like me sometimes, uh, in that slow traffic is much safer and therefore we do encourage slow driving. Um, and, and that's part of our control strategy, potentially. Um, so, we're not trying to deliver all the technology. We want to work with partners, people that can do innovation for us. So we're coming up with a framework of what would a kind of intelligent transport solution for London look like and how do we enable that so that we can stimulate innovation in the marketplace as well as us kind of have to think about it and generate it. And so this is, you know, the kind of, it, we're working on a 10-year programme and, and this is where we'd like to be um, with various building blocks appearing at different times. So if we start off with um, sensors, so it, it's difficult to know where to start with some of these discussions, but if you take the traffic light system, we currently manage about 7,000 junctions across London. Some of them are fixed time. Many of them have real-time optimization running against them. Uh, in order to support that capability, we have 14,000 magnetometers in the roads. Um, they give us something like 400 million events a day. Um, and currently, we don't use that data. Okay? It goes into the real-time optimizer, and then we effectively just summarize it and throw the detailed stuff away. Um, so I, I've been very keen that this probably tells us quite a lot. And so we, we managed to capture three months of this data and, and do a data science hack against it. And what we were able to demonstrate there was that in a weekend, people could build us uh, incident detection that we were seeing incidents in 60 minutes, uh, this system that, that was knocked together by a biologist, funnily enough, uh, could do it in 15. Our business case for SITS is that we can offer a billion pounds worth of benefit to London because we can identify delay early and we're actually looking about a 15 minute improvement in our identification and response time. And we, you know, some of the, the first things we've done, we identified that we weren't detecting incidents uh, or they were almost over before we saw them because today we detect incidents by looking people watching CCTV and seeing traffic. So you need somebody to look at a particular camera at the right time in order to see an incident happening. Whereas technology, we can see these things much earlier. So, um, you know, we, we, we recognise that, that the market can do some quite sensible things with our data. So we, we just needed to find uh, ways of starting to hold this data and uh, build it up. So on-premise was always seen as quite expensive, which is why we didn't, didn't store this. So we're now pushing it to the cloud. Um, we've subsequently bought integration technology to start moving data around. That's partly why we're here. That's very much cloud hosted. Um, and we're now just on the journey of starting to evolve and build things on this kind of base that you know, uh, start to add value to the business. So the place we've started is London Works, uh, which I'll explain more about in a few slides. The other parts of this, are, so we're going to start building data up. We will get our traffic sensor data. We have you know, 9,000 floating GPS sensors running around the network, better known as buses. So, uh, they tell us where they are every five seconds, so we can get quite good movement information from bus routes. Um, we, we log incidents, um, and from that core of data, we're then going to look at what else do we need to enrich uh, our understanding of journeys. So back to my kind of opening line, a journey to us is Roland walking out his house, walking up the street, that's a journey. He then gets on a bus, that's another leg of his journey. He then might get on the tube and, and then turns up at work, so he needs to cross Southwark 
the Blackfriars Road at Southwark. Um, so you, we need to get him across the road safely there. Um, so they're all parts of the legs that we're trying to manage and understand so that the pavement's wide enough everywhere I'm going to be walking. I can get across the road safely because traffic flow is interrupted enough to get everyone across that's trying to cross. Uh, and the buses are running predictably and smoothly. So, you know, we, we have quite a big challenge with data and, and building these things up. So we're, we're starting to build the data lake. Uh, that's just standard structured and unstructured storage in the cloud, S3 uh, and Dynamo at the moment, just because it's there and it's easy. Uh, we do business intelligence, which is this icon. We, we had our existing system, very much traditional BI type technology. And initially we've invested quite a lot in spatial, you know, so mapping, because everything's happening in space and time. And if you don't understand space well enough, it doesn't matter how accurate your time is, um, you don't know where it is. So we, one of our initial investments has been on a kind of good, solid, um, spatial data solution that, that gives us well curated data. Um, collaboration and innovation. This, so we've been using hackathons in the short term. We are currently running kind of a two month uh, access to some of our data through the catalysts, which are another part of government in effect, um, to start to stimulate uh, the market there, and we're prepared to, you know, if people ask for it, we will use our sandbox to extend the available data sets and people can try things um, as they wish. We obviously, TFL are well known for its open data policy, so we're publishing data. We have real time bus feeds at low resolution, and we have cycle information uh, as good as we have. They're all going to kind of evolve, and eventually we'll get to the point where we're giving you a lot more. Um, you know, if we're able to do big data analytics and event streaming, we'll, underst uh, we'll understand a lot more about movement on roads and therefore we'll be able to start alerting more. That'll be going to the kind of sat-nav markets so they can route you better uh, alongside, um, you know, direct to customers for the people that just want that, that information directly. So TFL Online are our main gateway into there. We're using uh, WSO2 as, a, as an enabler to get more information up to uh, developer.tfl.gov.uk, which, which is where the APIs come out from. Um, and also, kind of a bit more academic perhaps, but for the TFL partners, so the extranet, the London boroughs, promoters that are digging the road works up, the roads up, things like that, we're, we're extending our reach of our systems so that they can interact with us better because another way of looking at this is roadworks reduce our capacity. So if we allow too many roadworks, the traffic slows down um, and all sorts of problems occur. Uh, analytics is just analytics, so it would be your Python workbooks accessing into the data hub. And then the kind of OT technology, operational technology. So we, we manage the coordination of roadworks across London. We detect incidents and manage uh, the response to incidents across London. Uh, the, the thing no one believes is we spend a lot of time optimising traffic flow and junctions. You know, I, I mean, again, you know, hands up, I'm a driver, and I always sit at a junction and think, well, they could have done that better, but having worked with about 120 traffic engineers who are trying to make this work in a very chaotic environment, you know, it, it's... Um, they, they do the best, that, that's as much as I'd say. And then we're, we, we think all of this should be in a common operational view so that we're trying to build an in-house style uh, of applications so that we reduce training. It's all web-enabled so it's easier to deploy. And if we're building these things so we can run them in-house, we can, you know, HTML5 type things, we can then get them on the extranet out to the stakeholder community so they can start to interact with them. So that's where we're focused. As we get more data and our ability to do things with it improves, we, we expect to see eventing evolving up, if, you know, events and alerts coming up and better informing people uh, and more assisted decision making. So that's kind of the big plan. Uh, London Works, so this is what London Works does. It's a classic kind of OLTP 
type application. Currently, it's a Oracle, Oracle Forms type thing. Um, it was refreshed a year ago, and that went slightly wrong. So we started losing users. So we're now we we accelerated our delivery of a new London work system, which we're using the WSO2 stack kind of from dashboard server uh, integration with mapping, and then kind of most of the things below that, the ESP, Service Registry, API Manager, to, to then build an app. Um, it's there to minimize disruption, okay? Um, we also do some, you know, you, you be able to read the slides, but effectively, we, we agree what can be done, and we monitor what can, what's happening, and then we find people that do the wrong thing, basically. Uh, and we use the fines to reinvest in things like London Works to uh, keep the market uh, working. And that's how we do development. So we do about half a million roadworks a year. We, we get asked to approve. Um, this is a map um, north of Battersea uh, across to Holland Park. Green means we've approved these works. Amber means they're under consideration. And red means they're awaiting. Um, confirmation if they can go ahead. But that gives you an idea of the density that we're dealing with over short periods of time. We then have to look at, you know, for different areas, is Ride London happening? Is the marathon happening? And so we've got events and you can only you can't dig the road up well we've got an event running. Um, so it, it it's quite complicated. Uh, th this is where we are. This is due to go live uh, in December this year. Um, it will hit the press if it doesn't go live, unfortunately. Uh, so there's a degree of pressure. But we have Central Register, which shows us where all our roadworks are. That's based on our mapping tech. We then do, um, in effect, traffic management notifications, which are the things that talk about when roadworks are happening, or traffic orders, which is these are the certificates that say this is how you're going to deal with the roadworks and things around it. Um, and these are just a collection of, this is what the application looks like, looks quite still vanilla and bland. Uh, we'll probably spice it up at the last minute, but we've integrated maps and, and forms type data using dashboard server, so that if you enter a new notification here, you can draw on the map here and it's all coordinated between, between the two systems. You can then hover over an icon here and you can get summary data that's pulled from here, but then click on it, and you can come into the traffic management order. So we're just using HTML5 and standards to make everything uh, linked together. 